All right. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We're excited to offer our fifth, and we do them twice a year, uh, virtual uh, career fair. And this time we are going to be talking about information technology uh, and that vast field. Uh, there, there is so much to it. Uh, and we are going to uh, take a minute to introduce everyone here in a little bit. But I wanted to um, offer everyone on and listening our four wonderful panelists who have uh, given their time to join us this afternoon. Uh, we have a mixture of folks who teach programs related to information technology at colleges around the state. And then we also have uh, some folks that are doing work in the field uh, of information technology. If you all have questions, please feel free to send them in. Uh, you can use the, the chat feature or you know whatever you would like, uh, that'll work. Uh, we'll stay muted until the end though. Uh, and then I am April Query. I am your facilitator today uh, with CFNC. All right, so here is our agenda. I wanna make sure we talk about what brought us all together initially with College Application Week and Countdown to College and offer a few resources that you'll find on CFNC and ncareers.org. Then we're gonna take a few minutes and introduce all of our wonderful panelists. And we have a, a nice structured Q&A format for folks. Uh, and then also we are happy to take questions that you all have as well. So I think putting them in the chat's a great one because sometimes it's a question that another another person, another attendee um, might have, but um, you know didn't, didn't even realize they had that question. So everyone can kind of see it. Um, so if you have questions, send them in, uh, and then we're just gonna go from there, okay? So I'm gonna kick off with some basic information about college application week and countdown to college and make sure that we are on the same page with what we're doing here today, okay? So uh, I work with College Foundation North Carolina, CFNC, okay? And as you guys know, we put on Countdown to College and College Application Week. And what are these, okay? So this is really just an opportunity um, and a campaign really across the state to help students get those applications done for admissions help you with residency and help you with the FAFSA form and financial aid. If you are a senior listening to this, the FAFSA form this year will not open until December 1st. Um, but we try to focus on all these things throughout the month of October and bring you resources. Right now we are in the plan piece of the resources that we are offering you all, hence talking about careers. We've got folks on that are high school seniors. We've got folks on and listening that are juniors. My parents, educators, or you know, other things that I haven't mentioned here. Um, so keep in mind that this will happen again next year. So for seniors, this year's college application week will kick off October 21st and go through October 27th. Uh, many of the colleges in North Carolina are waiving application fees to apply to them. Uh, so that's great. Uh, the list of uh, colleges waiving fees has been released. So make sure you head to cfnc.org uh, slash C2C to get more information. Wanted to point out where you'll find the applications on CFNC if you go to the apply section. So apply to college and then go into your application hub. You do need to be logged into your CFNC account. And this is where you're going to find all of the applications for colleges uh, in North Carolina. Okay. You may also encounter a linked campus, which is just a campus that says, hey, definitely start here at CFNC. We're going to make sure that you end up at the application that we'd like you to end up at for admissions which is just really important for college application week specifically, because um, it's the only way we can guarantee that students are finding the right place where they're gonna see those applications waived on the website. Okay, so super important to start on CFNC. Uh, at any time, junior, senior year, you guys wanna go into your CFNC account and update your profile. Very important as it relates to admissions and transcripts and NC College Connect. So go into your dashboard, log in, go into your dashboard, make sure your address is right, your name's right, that you've got your legal name in there, not your fun nickname you go by. Make sure your student number's in there uh, and that you have a personal email address. So just update some stuff, really important, okay? All right, so let's move into our conversation about careers. I wanna show you where a few things are and then we're gonna move into our wonderful panelists, okay? So on CFNC, under the Plan Your Future section, you will find an area called Plan for a Career. 
Okay. Um, and there's assessments and learn about yourself, but I'm going to skip that information right now because if you all are here or listening later, uh, you very likely already have an interest in information technology. So that would be where you learn about yourself would be where you'd figure out some different, you know, careers or career clusters you might be interested in. Explore occupations. This is where you can take a look at all the great um, occupations that exist. We're going to talk about that today. All of the amazing, you know, different options you have within information technology. Um, if you go into Explore Careers, you'll want to make sure you're logged into your CFNC account because it automatically logs you into ncareers.org. Um, it's going to show you a list of all kinds of different careers. Now, over here on the left, you can search for careers based on uh, career cluster, other things too, but right now I want to focus on career cluster. So I have an arrow. If you were to click on career cluster at that point, you can select information technology, and then you're going to get a list of some different careers um, within that. It's going to show you, in, and you can click on the career. So you can see information about salary growth rate, right? That's important. Um, average annual openings, which is similar to growth rate, but on a more uh, more current kind of level, the education you might need, and then we connect that to the colleges that might offer um, some of those programs. So very helpful, hopefully for you all, especially as we go through um, this time together today. Okay, so this is where we are going to kick off with our panelists. And I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I want to read everyone's bio. Uh, students listening, I think this is really important for you to hear because this kind of offers a little bit of information about everyone's path, sort of. Um, but I'm going to start with Dr. Pamela Short, and I'm going to read her bio and then invite her to speak, and then we'll do the same um, with the next person. Okay, so Dr. Pamela Short brings over 25 years of experience in higher education. 25 years, guys. That's awesome. She has a specialized focus on business and information technology. So think about this as you think about questions to ask. She serves as Dean of Business and Information Technologies at Forsyth Community College. Uh, if you're not sure where that is, I'm sure she'll let you know. It's more the towards the middle of the state, okay? Um, this is where she leads curriculum and continuing education programs in business, entrepreneurship, and IT. Um, Dr. Short's IT expertise in, is supported by a master's in information systems and operations management from UNC Greensboro. So again, she's here representing Forsyth Tech. You can ask questions about that or follow up with her later about that, but she also attended UNC Greensboro. Um, and she has a bachelor's degree in computer information science from High Point University. So good. She can probably answer a lot of questions about those institutions and their op opportunities with this. Um, and she has an associates of, of a science in information uh, systems technology programming from Davidson Davy Community College, again, in the middle of the state. Okay? Her IT careers includes roles as an information system specialist and faculty member in computer programming. She has contributed to the development of a cybersecurity pipeline of skilled workers. So cybersecurity, we've got folks on here today to help talk about that. It's going to be a really interesting day. Um, and she's presented on topics related to workforce development and student success. So thank you so much, Dr. Short, for joining us. And I'll pass it over to you to just uh, introduce yourself and your job and all that stuff that I didn't mention yet. Great. Thank you so much, April. It's an honor to be here. And I'm so excited to share um, my experiences and opportunities that are currently available in IT. Uh, you don't have to have a straight uh, trajectory into IT. A lot of folks um, have kind of a varied path, and um, I'm also a first-generation college student, so um, it's a fun and rewarding career, and I've lived in North Carolina, born and raised, um, so all of my experiences here in North Carolina is a terrific place for especially females in IT to get started and grow. So that is a passion that I certainly have as well. Perfect, thank you so much. And I believe we have Victoria Farrell on now as well. So what I'm gonna do, Victoria, is if it's okay, I'd like to read your bio. So the students that are on and students that are listening to this later, um, learn a little bit about you as a panelist. Uh, and then you can talk about um, anything else that I haven't mentioned pertaining to, you know, who you're representing, uh, the school, your job, your pathway, uh, your specialty. Victoria Farrell is the Cybersecurity and Systems Security Program at Forsyth Tech Community College. So Victoria 
Pharaoh Miss Farrell is also at Forsyth Tech, which we said was more in the middle of the state. Uh, and that's cybersecurity. Um, she can, you know, answer questions about that too. She has a robust background in education and information technology, and she focuses on coordinating and instructing hands-on cybersecurity and systems security programs. Exciting. Um, the responsibilities leverage her certificates in networking and cybersecurity. So I, I think that word certificate is important too, and some of the questions we'll get to. Um, to ensure the curriculum meets industry demands and empowers students with practical workforce ready skills. Excellent. Uh, Ms. Farrell, do you mind introducing yourself beyond what I said? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me. And first, let me just tell you I'm at the airport. I am returning from the National Cybersecurity Education Colloquium um, in St. Louis, but I did not want to miss this opportunity to um, speak. Uh, to you all and um, and the students that are here. So excited to be here. So um, my path um, to cybersecurity really, uh, I started out in IT support um, and teaching um, in the K-12 schools and then made the transition to cybersecurity a, a few years ago. And it's um, absolutely the best decision I've ever made. Um, so I currently, you know, teach all the various cybersecurity courses. We have, you know, an associate's degree and certificates in cybersecurity, but I'm also over our system security uh, program as well, which is similar, but um, different in that it really focuses on um, the security infrastructure and uh, more that the hardware uh, setup. So thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us, especially from an airport. <laughs> we appreciate it. You're amazing. Um... <laughs> Okay, we are going to come over to Meredith Hardy, okay? And Meredith Hardy graduated from NC State and has a degree in political science. I think this is interesting as we think about pathways to get to information technology careers. She's been working at College Foundation for 14 years, and her role right now is the web content administrator and then also does technical support for schools. And she's had a lot of on-the-job training um, to get kind of where she is right now. So welcome, uh, Ms. Hardy. And if there's anything you want to add to uh, about yourself, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I have a really cool path because like I said, I have a degree in political science. And I remember I got a job at College Foundation thinking it's a nonprofit. I'm using it because uh, you always want to feel like you're using your degree. Um, but uh, I started off as a college counselor in our call center. And uh, and then when our RDS program, our residency program started, I actually started with that program and did our appeals programs. And then from there, there was a, a program analyst for RDS that was available. And I had a lot of knowledge about the system because I had been uh, in customer service doing all of that stuff. So, um, you know, I, I think an important thing is being with a company that is very supportive of your growth, because after that, then this web content administrator came up and they took a chance on me um, because they had seen, I guess, hopefully that I'd done a good job in other things. And I had definitely had an interest. So uh, they were they very luckily I, I got this position. So what I do is uh, a lot of people don't think about websites and how big they are and all the information that goes into it and all the people that have say so in a website. So I don't have any say so on what goes on a website, but all of the people then tell me, here's what I want to happen on the website. And then I make that happen um, for CFNC's website. So that's kind of me in a nutshell, but thank you for having me as well. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Meredith. Appreciate it. Uh, and then we have one more person uh, on our panel today. One more amazing person. We have Dr. Judith Gebauer. Uh, and I'm going to read some information about Dr. Gebauer and then ask her to chime in as well. So Judith Gebauer is a professor, professor, professor of information systems at the Congdon School of Supply Chain business analytics and information systems and all of that as part of the Cameron School of Business at UNC Wilmington, which is down here on the coast. Okay. Um, so it's, it's interesting. It's, you know, you might want to ask some questions about how some of these careers live in a school of business, right? Um, she received a master's of economics with a concentration in information systems and a PhD from the University of Freiburg in Germany. Freiburg in Germany, say that wrong. Uh, her current research focuses on the management of information systems and new information technologies, 
including artificial intelligence and virtual reality. So questions about AI, um, virtual reality, stakeholder analysis, and IS pedagogy. Areas of teaching include strategy management and governance of IT resources in the organization, systems analysis, project management, and introductory uh, technology courses. Okay? She's also interested in curriculum development and undergraduate and graduate levels. So lots of amazing things there. Uh, looks like she has education um, internationally, so that's really cool as well. So um, Dr. Gebauer, uh, thank you for joining us, and I'll let you take a few minutes to introduce yourself. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. I also have a dog that is, <laughs> I'm so sorry, he's disturbed by somebody outside, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so um, I, I'm on the business school side of things, um, and um, uh, I would be the person that can tell Meredith what to put on the website. Like we think about um, what are some of the requirements that um, you might need with that technology can support you with that you might need, and then um, how can technology make it happen? So that's that's my my area. Um, I do teach in the IT information technology program at um, my school. I'm familiar with computer science. Um, we have a cybersecurity major as well. Um, we have um, majors in all these fields: IT, computer science. Um, uh, in, and then business with information systems. And we also have concentrations and minors. So we kind of have a full spectrum of, of these um, different programs that I could talk about. Um, so I'm very glad to be here and I apologize for the dog. No, no, it's great. That's where we're at with the virtual world. Everyone's fine with dogs and airports and, and all the things. It's fine. It's what's great about it all, right? Um, so that's awesome. Thank you for being here. And I think that between all four of you, we have just absolutely everything we could ask for uh, as it relates to information technology. So thank you again. Um, all right, so let's dig into kind of the meat of this afternoon. And this is how it's gonna go. We're gonna ask a question and just to keep things nice and organized, I just have a couple names attached to each question. If anyone else on our panel has got some thoughts about it, feel free to chime in. And then I wanna say again, attendees, you're welcome to send in questions in chat or in the Q&A feature, and we're gonna address those as well, okay? All right, so Dr. Shore and Dr. Gebauer, let's start here. High school students, are there specific courses they should be taking? How should they prepare now while they are in high school? And we can start with Dr. Short. Great question. Um, well, I'll begin my experience in um, wanting to have an IT career was in a high school keyboarding class. So definitely any technology class that you can take. Um, I remember taking a keyboarding class and by the second week I was like, I wanna be a computer programmer. Computer programming is not keyboarding, <laughs> but um, that, that will definitely help you um, explore a little bit, uh, get an idea as to what your aptitude is in technology but uh, some other courses that support it is definitely math, um, especially algebra, um, and any critical thinking courses are uh, particularly helpful. Yeah, um, I would. I want to say um, uh, I have a son that went through, came through the um, high school, North Carolina high school system, and I think um, uh, some courses to recommend would be something like principles of computer science. I know there's a course like that with or without programming um, could be um, applicable here. I know there's networking courses that students can take um, at the high school level. Um, I would also recommend anything related to business um, because um, that's not necessarily a core course in high school. But this this whole way of thinking about like what what is it that businesses need, um, and how do they work, and what is the role that IT can play in this in this um, environment, um, kind of conditioning students to to those questions, I think is also important. Um, and also, I would recommend to students to maybe start paying attention um, to the role of technology um, on for the success of businesses in the real world, like things you hear maybe on the news 
um, in, in the economy, for the economy in general, in conversations with your parents, um, friends, teachers, and, and see if there's anything that's being offered on your school in, in that regard to kind of like um, broaden your horizon a little bit from the more traditional high school subjects. That's great. And as you all are answering some of these questions, I'm going to, well, if I could share it with everyone, here we go. I'm going to add some stuff uh, into the chat so that you all have kind of a recap of some of these great tips that everyone is, is offering. So thank you both so much. Okay, so let's come over to another question. We're going to stay with Dr. Short and we're going to move over to Ms. Hardy. Uh, and let's talk about remote options in the fields. Um, what's what's out there? We can start with Dr. Short. Thank you. There are certainly a lot more remote options available in the last five years. Um, in 2023, about 67% of IT jobs worldwide were remote. And we really have to think about the worldwide um, economy and career opportunities because although we're in North Carolina, you may not be working in North Carolina or for a company in North Carolina. Uh, we have uh, community partners, folks in Winston-Salem who help inform our programming at Forsyth Tech and they work for um, industries that are in other states and even other countries. So IT makes uh, remote work very possible. Uh, one of the, the biggest fields of remote jobs is in software development. Um, IT networking is, is much more close up. You're doing wiring and being on site. There's uh, travel involved in that. So um, there's a lot of jobs that are 100% remote, but some are hybrid um, as well. Thank you. And I'll kind of ask also, um, are all, you know, I know we said 67%. Um, is it a good idea for a student to look at IT if they definitely just are looking for something they want to be remote for? Or should they think that some of these jobs are, um, you know, in person, traveling, working in the field? What's that like? There are definitely, especially entry level jobs, a lot of companies want to um, have more hands on. Uh, type of experience? Have you come into the office? Um, I would never recommend going into a career just because of salary or because of the the work style or anything like that. Really follow your passion, follow what you um, what you have the greatest interest in, um, because that will be where you get the most fulfillment at. So don't don't base your career choice on money or remote work or anything like that. Uh, find out what your true passions are, I would recommend. That's great. And then thinking about the field side of things, uh, Ms. Hardy, is there anything you would add about, you know, being remote in IT versus in person or what folks might want to think about? Um, just thinking about that, uh, I would say a lot of stuff is hybrid these days. Um, we come in, I personally come in two days a month is what we're required to come in at. And I know a lot of colleagues and friends of mine, you might be hybrid, but you usually have to live within driving distance of your work or usually within the same state or something like that. So keep that in mind as well, that a lot of companies do ask you to have some kind of hybrid schedule. So you do need to because it is hard when you're doing, if you were living in North Carolina and you worked for a California company, they're going to expect you to be with those hours and not here. So there's a lot of stuff that can come up when you're doing full remote work too. Um, so yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Oops, skipped question. There we go. I want to make sure I'm on the right one. Okay. Miss Farrell and Dr. Gebauer, wondering if you could talk about, you know, it, you know, just this is the one question I have in here about like kind of financial aid. Are students going to find scholarships likely um, for these fields or how might that work? And I'll start with uh, Ms. Farrell, if that's if that's all right. Sure. Hopefully the uh, noise behind me is not too loud. Can you hear me well? I can hear you well. Yes, ma'am. OK. All right. Perfect. So um, just like, you know, applying to any um, college, you would need to go through that that financial aid um, mm -hmm process, but one of the specific um, scholarships that we offer at Forsyth Tech is the Cyber Force Scholarship for Service. 
Um, and that's a really great scholarship. So you would basically go to Copper Psych Tech for one year, and then you would transfer to UNC Charlotte for two years and get your computer science degree with a concentration in uh, cyber. So that scholarship, however, does require those students to work for the federal government for three years. So that's your way of paying back for all of the benefits of that scholarship in particular. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe something the students hadn't thought of that are on. Uh, Dr. Gabau, or anything else you'd like to add with the scholarships? Yeah. Um, so I looked, I looked on our website um, because I don't, I'm not too familiar with um, the, all of these scholarships in particular. Um, but if, if you um, look, you, you go to the college of your choice, which could be UNC Wilmington, and you type in scholarships, um, you will find that there's essentially scholarships for every single area, including computer science. Um, there's several in computer science, some related to IT, some related to cyber, um, some for the, in the business school, we have scholarships specific, specifically related, related to information systems. Um, so there's, there's se several, um, options, at least at, in Wilmington, and I'm assuming this is very similar for other fields as well, or other schools as well. Um, so I would recommend anyone who's applying to these specific schools to see if there's anything available, um, in, in their field. And then, um, uh, talk to the people at the school and see like if this is something that would apply to a freshman coming in or this is something that you might want to think about applying once you get a, um, uh, once once you get admitted um, and then also like the thought of um, like people transferring between colleges we get a lot of transfer students I think I used to um, we have I, I want to say two-thirds of the people in our IT major are transfer students uh, from mostly community colleges. Um, so it's it's there's a great system in North Carolina where courses it's it's very easy to transfer courses between colleges um, that students may also want to take keep in mind. Um, but in terms of scholarships, I would I would recommend to peruse the websites and, and see what you can find there. The the list of scholarships, at least for UNCW, is very long. Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. And you you probably accidentally led us into exactly a question that a student has. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, good job. Uh, and I'm going to just open this up to everyone. And I think you know, the students uh, the students that definitely listen to this are super interested in IT fields. So I'm going to um, kind of break up our normal uh, path here and come over here and ask a question. So we have a student on who's very interested in cybersecurity. They're planning to start at a community college, so they're supposed to. They're planning to start at Wake Tech, but if we're thinking broadly, a student's interested in cybersecurity, starting at a two-year school, uh, and where they're stuck at is: are there some careers that have that associates with cybersecurity that a student would go into, or perhaps are the careers related to cybersecurity going to require a bachelor's degree to transfer to a four-year school? I would love to jump in and answer that question. Thank you. Ms. So it really depends. A, a lot of the job postings out there do have uh, a bachelor's degree or a master's degree as a requirement. However, what we uh, there there is conversation nationally to adjust those HR requirements for students so that what they are requiring is going to be more skills based um, and certifications taken into consideration. So yes, majority of those jobs will probably say some experience needed or a bachelor's. However, we are encouraging our community college students to go ahead and apply for those jobs. Um, but before they get to that point where they're applying, we're also encouraging them to uh, get the experience while they're in that um, in the community college setting or in that you know, four year college setting. They need to go ahead and embrace some of the opportunities, clubs, competitions, internships, all of those things that can potentially count as experience before they even graduate. That's perfect. Um, and and you know the you all the students when you're at the community college, you will have 
and, and maybe, you know, um, Ms. Farrell can talk to it more, but you will have someone that you can talk to about your options, right? You'll have a counselor or an advisor. Um, so you won't be on your own with it. There will be help in your department um, to, to kind of get through whatever it is you're working on there. Can I jump in one, like for the students who transfer, my recommendation would be to also check with the college that you want to transfer into and see like what requirements you may want to focus on. So a lot of the transfer students that we get, they have a associate's degree from a community college and they get like essentially all the courses approved like they, but then there might be one or two that don't, like there might, wanna, might, might be one or two requirements that are sometimes not met from the community colleges for UNCW. It's, it's the, um, physical education and the language, like the foreign language, right? But knowing these things, it's so easy to make sure you get, or, and the math requirements sometimes as well. So kind of knowing these requirements, and then you could maybe get that extra course taken at the community college, and then don't have to worry about it once you get to the four-year college. I mean, that's like, I think if, sometimes I feel bad for the students that come to us, like, oh, you still have to take physical education class and Spanish intermediate or something you could have you could have knocked that off like a long time ago at the community college right absolutely and students that are listening keep an eye on what is offered at your high school also um especially those that are you know do at an early college or if you've got some courses that you can knock out while you're in high school that will give you college credit as well so I'm going to move over to question and then I'm going to pop back over and we'll look at student questions again. Okay, so this question is going to be for um, Ms. Hardy and Ms. Farrell, but again, whoever wants to pop in and talk about it is welcome to. This is, um, this is timely with what we were just talking about, plus this may kind of answer the question that we have come in um that we had come in to so this is it sounds like the answer to this might really be it depends so if you have a student who's interested in computer science or um biotech well we'll talk about biotechnology in a minute um or cybersecurity, you know um and they're kind of on that the struggle bus of do i need it do i need an associate's degree do i need a four-year degree you know maybe they'll need higher than a four-year degree um, what is folks' recommendation? And maybe we'll start with Ms. Farrell and then see if any, you know, Ms. Hardy and see who else wants to jump in. What do you what do you recommend the students do? So at the community college level, um, we do offer the associates in cybersecurity and system security, and a lot of other community colleges will have one or the other or both. Um, we do also offer um, certificates in cyber and system security that um, those are an option for students as well. But if a student comes to us and says, hey, I really want to get a career, uh, I want to, you know, work in cybersecurity, what do you suggest? We always suggest the associates. Um, that's going to give them more um, content knowledge, more um, skills-based practice. Um, and then there's also some certifications that are tied into some of the courses that we prepare them for as well. So I like what you said at the beginning, that it depends. <laughs> so it really depends. We do have students that can get our associates. Um, in cybersecurity and then move on to a um, four-year university. Um, and I think, well, different community colleges have articulation agreements with four-year universities. Um, so that's another piece that would be worth looking at as well, because if you can transfer to a, you know, go from community college, transfer to a four-year that is guaranteed to take your credits, um, to that would be really worthwhile um, to look at as well. And each college is gonna have different articulation agreements um, with different schools. Um, so that's that's my initial take on that, but it does depend. The answer to so many of these questions is it depends. It depends. Um, and I also want to, while we're on this topic, a question came in for Q and A. If someone's looking um, to get a degree in computer science, is it better or does it matter if that's in a, a, if it's a BA or a BS? Is there an option for a BA in computer science? Are they all Bachelor of Science? I can speak to that a little bit. Um, my background is in computer science. Um, for the most part, it's all BS because it it is heavy in math and and that type of area. Um, usually your business programs are BA programs, but IT 
computer science are usually BS programs. And um, a lot of software development, computer science fields, they do want um, at least work experience, considerable work experience. If you have an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree um, at entry level. But one thing that can really help you bypass a lot of that is the work-based learning, internships, the um, Skills USA competitions, all of those things that Ms. Farrell spoke about earlier uh, really help give you an edge um, if you do not have formal work experience and uh, just have like uh, an associate's degree. Uh, they're, they're still an entry point into the field. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I think that allowed us to kind of talk to that student's question. Um, and then I was going to uh, ask, we have a student, um, and I'm not sure in your bios if I heard, um, but we have a student who's interested in biotechnology. Um, is there anyone on who's comfortable talking specifically about a path to get into biotechnology? Forsyth Tech um, does have a biotechnology program. Um, I can't really speak a lot to that other than saying that we do have the program um, and a lot of times those programs will fall into the health sciences area rather than the IT and uh, business schools. And um, so in my school, um, computer science has um, quite a large um, number of concentrations and some of those go into the sciences, like they use can be um, related to biotech or chemistry or, or something like that. So um, I'm not sure if we have an actual biotech program where I am, mm -hmm. um, but but it's also kind of, there's some overlap with, with computer science and um, maybe maybe there some, some um, universities might have like a minor in this area as well. And I'll send some some resources over in the, the chat, at least that we have on CFNC related to biotechnology. That's the thing with the clusters, but especially the career clusters, but especially with information technology, as I've learned planning this also, there's so many different fields to go into that. Um, and you guys really span a lot of them, but still not span every single thing, right? So um, that you guys are... Thank you so much. And I'll add some more information in here um, in the in the chat for folks as well. And April, I'd like to add something to that conversation. So um, there is a thing called CyberBio, um, cybersecurity in biotech. Um, so I'm currently working on a project uh, with our biotechnology program uh, where we're creating you know scenarios that are workplace relevant for a bio, someone in biotech that highlights the um, things that they would need to know about being secure, about cybersecurity. Um, so it's it's great that so many of our programs can overlap um, at cybersecurity specifically into so many other programs as well. So if the student was wanting to go into you know, programs such as biotech, um, getting a cybersecurity certificate along with that would make them that much more attractive to a potential employer. There's so many um, things that are so intricate about this field. Um, there's just, there's, it's just so interesting. I just, um, thank you so much. And I, like I said, I'm gonna keep putting some stuff into into the chat here to help with that too. Um, okay, so Ms. Fer Ms. Farrell, while, you, while you're here with us here and Dr. Short, um, is there a way that is, and we kind of have talked about the first part of this question. There's so many options. Uh, do you have any tips for how a student might figure out what they should specialize in? Okay, so I 100% do. So there's a website. Um, it's called uh, the NICE Framework Work Roles in Cybersecurity. Um, and I can I can put the um, link in the chat for, for you guys. Um, yes, in a moment. But basically, the NICE Framework has broken down the cybersecurity uh, careers into seven different categories, and uh, in each category, there are many, many, many options to choose from. 
So cybersecurity is going to go anywhere from oversight and governance, which is um, like cybersecurity policy and management. Um, then you've got design and development. So that's like your secure software development type of careers. You've got implementation and operation careers. So maybe you're in system administration or um, data analysis. Then you have protection and defense. And that's the category that we actually focus on at Foresight Tech. Uh, we're preparing students to be level one SOC analysts. So that's a SOC would be security operations center. Um, so they're the ones actually looking at the incidents and responding to those incidents to figure out if they're true positives or false positives. Um, there's also a category for cyberspace intelligence. Um, obviously that's, you know, intelligence collection. Um, and then cyberspace effects. And that's more looking at the foreign um, intelligence gathering piece in cybersecurity. So um, I think I've skipped investigation. Investigation is the other one. So when you think about cybercrime investigation, there's a whole a whole other set of jobs under that category as well. So that's that's a fantastic resource for students when they want to get in there and just see the different descriptions, and then they can start focusing in on, oh, okay, I maybe I like this job because I can see the tasks involved. That's that's what's great about this website. So you can see specifically. Um, some of the things that you would be doing in that cert job. Room. So that that was a lot of um, concentration areas just within cybersecurity alone. Not to mention all the all the other areas in IT. Uh, for Scythe Tech, we offer nine different IT programs, such as software development, web technologies, data analysts, um, network security. Um, so it can be overwhelming. And uh, one thing that I think is really great that North Carolina offers to students and high school students in particular is our Career and College Promise. Um, that program is so valuable because our high school students, rising juniors and seniors, if they meet the qualifications, uh, which many do, um, just look at your community college um, requirements. And uh, that provides a way for you to explore different career and college promise programs and IT programs in particular as well. And the tuition is waived. And some, some high school um, systems will even pay for textbooks and things like that. That is a local decision to your um, high school um, system. But uh, state of North Carolina does offer the tuition waiver for uh, juniors and seniors that meet the qualifications to do the career and college promise pathway. Even if you don't want an IT career, it's a great um, exploration opportunity where you can have a side job. So you, you can do IT on the side and whenever you want to and always have some type of gainful employment and income, no matter what your career is um, later on. Another great opportunity is uh, summer experiences. Uh, do summer camps, clubs, things like that, and just explore as much as possible. That's amazing. Thank you. And I want to encourage the students to take a look at the chat because we're all throwing all kinds of awesome links in here. And I'm about to put in a little bit more. Uh, so um, it's a lot, but if nothing else, click on the link and have it open. <laughs> um, and then um, I'm going to work on trying to include some of these when we send out um, information on this. So um, all right. Thank you so much. There are so many cool options. Um, I'm going to um, Actually, I'm going to go ahead and while we have Dr. Shore, and then I'm going to stop. And after this question, we have um, someone who has been a career development um, coordinator, career and technical education teacher on to talk a little bit um, on that end too. But first, I want to go ahead and pass this over to Dr. Shore. And as we're thinking about some careers that maybe don't even exist yet, they're coming um, as it relates to like AI, for example. How can students start to prepare for those? Uh, and then how are our schools preparing for that? And I'd like to ask that of Dr. Short and then also um, Dr. Gebauer um, afterwards, if that's okay. 
Thank you for this question, um, April. I think a very important thing, not only for I AI, but IT in general, is to stay curious. Your, your curiosity is going to be so important and so valuable in this field. Um, in IT, we focus a lot on teaching students how to learn because we know that the technology that you're learning now within two years, there's gonna be new and different technology available that you will be working with by the time you are employed. Um, the, the stuff that you learned on and worked with in college and in high school will seem ancient. So um, it's really important that you just learn how to learn um, and don't be afraid to try new things. Um, AI is opening up a lot of great entrepreneurship opportunities. So I would add to maybe the earlier question about what courses to take, maybe some entrepreneurship courses, just to build that curiosity uh, within yourself, seeing opportunities of um, what do people need that they don't know that they need? And how can you feel that with AI and with technology? Um, you have a great opportunity to build a career for yourself that doesn't even exist right now. Yeah, I think that I think that's that's really great advice. Um, I would also add, I mean, um, before you can go into some of these new specializations, you need the foundations. <laughs> so kind of make sure you have those um, in whatever field, if it's computer science or IS or cyber IT, um, and then uh, just keep an eye out for these new emerging things that might be offered in in the colleges usually that would be maybe an elective course um talk to your talk to your um instructors your advisors um what's out there and yeah i definitely stay curious and always think about like how can you apply these things to your own lives and careers um and um and then i want to say just maybe follow your your passion um ai is is, is emerging and, and and great right now um and there are so many opportunities but there are also um issues to take to think about um like related maybe to data management cyber entrepreneurship like you said like how can this be combined with the businesses that you have um so it's very exciting um one one thing that we say in 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 my vicinity is like the technology changes but the economic laws stay the same um so um so that's also something for the students to remember um as as ne these new technologies come along that's great i want to make sure i got this right dr brown put in the chat technology changes <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah the technology changes but the economic laws stay the same like businesses at the end of the day whatever mm -hmm. technology it is you still have to uh, you still have to make money essentially or make a profit or right. kind of follow follow your business strategy. It it can be impacted, but there are mm -hmm. some certain things that kind of stay the same. That's perfect. Thank you so much. I'm gonna pause for a second and Miss Farrell is at the airport, as folks may have heard, and she has to go get on a plane. So I want to take a minute and um, give her the floor for any final words she has, and then we'll continue on with our panel and our questions. Thank you, Ms. Farrell. Okay, thank, thank you so much for having me today. Um, yeah, I did want to say just a couple of things before I have to go. My flight's boarding early, so can't really do much about that. But um, a couple of things. Um, certifications was one area that I was going to speak about. And for cybersecurity specifically, um, the CompTIA Security Plus is a vendor neutral certification that we do encourage all of our students to take and they're actually they take a course um, to prepare them for that as well so that's one of those baseline um, certifications there's also isc squared and then you have some vendor specific certifications through ec council or cisco so the certification route really um, beyond those initial baseline certifications you really need to think about what direction you want to go and that's why i mentioned the nice uh, framework work roles so that you can go in there and if you're interested in cybersecurity, once you figure out, you know, what area uh, category you fall into, then you can really start looking at some of those um, certifications that are needed for those particular careers. Uh, one more resource that I do want to point out to students for cybersecurity is 
called cyberseek.org, C-Y-B-E-R-S-E-E-C, excuse me, S-E-E-K, <laughs> .org. Um, that is a fabulous tool. There's a career pathway tool on there. There's also a heat map that shows job openings. Um, it also highlights the minimum certification, you know, that CompTIA Security Plus certification and how that's a doorway into a lot more careers as well. Um, and the last piece was going to be my advice to students. Um, and my advice for students, and, and I have already had two high school students myself um, move on to college and um, start now. My advice is to start now thinking about what you guys want to do try out all the different courses. And I know I'm echoing some of the things you guys have already said, um, but it's really, really important. Um, look for those free workshops, free camps, join those clubs, join those competitions. You may not know what you're doing, but the fact that you show up to a competition lets you get to know what it's like. What does that environment feel like? What What are some of the tools that are going to be asking me to try out? Um, so there's even competitions out there for, you know, high schoolers. The National Cyber League is, is getting ready to kick off. I think the sign up ends tomorrow. So if you're not sure uh, if that's something that um, you want to try out, just go for it. I say don't be afraid. Just give it a shot. Any, in any IT career, any IT experience that you guys can get, go for it. Just, just you, The only thing you can do is figure out maybe what you don't want to do. Or maybe you do figure out what you do want to do. So you, it's a win-win either way. Absolutely. Such good advice. Thank you so much for being here, Miss Miss Farrell. We really appreciate it. And um, safe flight. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a great day. Um, all right. So we're going to come over to, thank you, Miss Hardy. And we want to kind of ask about, you know, you're in the field working, right? You've got different companies um, do you, would you say that lots of different companies have IT careers, uh, or should students be thinking about something, uh, less broad? I mean, I think a lot of companies do. I, I will say this as far as my best advice to students that I would say is pick a good company that genuinely cares about you and cares about your growth. Because if you get with a good company and you show what you're really talented at, they're going to grasp onto that and they're going to use that and, and maybe guide you in the right place. So honestly, some finding the right company and finding a a place that you feel like your manager really actually cares about your growth as, as a person, that is honestly something extremely important that I wish more people would talk about is how important it is that you find the right place that works for you and is willing to work on you as a person and make sure you're, you're growing in your job. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, and I think I know I saw Dr. Kabauer kind of nod too. There's a lot of companies that have IT, right? IT is everywhere. Um, mm -hmm depending on what you're looking for. So you do have that space um, to do that and to think about other things that are important to you as well. Is there anything that you would add to that, Dr. Gebauer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, IT is such a um, big part of so many companies these days um, that, yeah, um, one thing I want to add to what um, Ms. Hardy said, and I, I really like what you said, when, when I talk to students about like, finding finding a job in the in the field is don't don't be so nervous and in, in presenting yourself to the companies but also check out the companies themselves and find out if this is a place you want to work and that kind of like fosters your career and um your career and and aligns with your interests and um so making this a two-way conversation this interview process, I think, is is very helpful and um, really goes into what what um, Ms. Hardy said. Like, you need to find the place where you can the, the student can grow. Um, and yes, um, a lot of there's a lot of companies that have IT. Um, one thing that might be changing though a little bit is with technology moving on and moving to the cloud and AI coming in. Um, sometimes companies do outsource IT, um, and then there are companies specifically focused on technology. Um, but it doesn't mean that IT is going away. It's just um, it, it, it's shifting a little bit. That's perfect. Thank you. And I like the idea that it's not going away. It's just shifting. Um, okay. 
Uh, and while we have you, Dr. Kabauer, I know Ms. Farrell kind of talked to this as she was leaving. Is there anything else you would add beyond what she mentioned about specialized certificates and what they might help students with? Yeah, I, there um, there's certificates all throughout IT. There are certificates like on networking, there's like Cisco um, type uh, CCNA um, certificates, there's CompTIA in security, but also in hardware and networking. Um, there are uh, Microsoft-based um, certificates for students. And I know that when my son was in high school, some students took those like in the, the office applications um, that students can take. Um, Azure, that's cloud-based um, Microsoft um, applications in the cloud. There's Amazon has a bunch of certificates, um, Amazon Web Services, um, cybersecurity related. There are many courses that students can take and get um, many credentials from area um, um, uh, websites such as LinkedIn Learning, um, Coursera, and we also have Percipio um, that have all like short courses that sort of teach certain subject areas um, that students can take. Um, I think the role of certificates are to t to a show um, that you're able to do um, extracurricular stuff that is maybe not part of a particular course. It teaches um, terminology in a certain area that helps you communicate that knowledge, um, and so it 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 can be a really good um, addition to the resumes. One thing that is maybe a little bit of a downside of certificates, they expire after a little while. Um, and so if, if a high school student takes a certificate right now, by the time they are ready to leave college, the, these, the certificate may have expired and has to be renewed. Um, but it does help to kind of understand what the field is about and um, acquire the, the terminology to be able to communicate um, intelligently in that area to somebody that you might want to interact with, uh, be it like for networking or to find a job. Thank you so much. And we put, um, I put a link uh, to LinkedIn Learning, uh, some more points that Dr. Gabauer made, and then put, I'll put some more links into what I know that um, she mentioned Microsoft and Amazon. And so we'll get those in there in case students just want to take a gander. Keep in mind, like she just said, they do expire. So it isn't necessarily something you want to go through right now. You may, depending on where you're at, but you may not. But just uh, that awareness um, to know what's out there is good. Okay, so Ms. Farrell um, had kind of had to head out. So I'll just see if anyone else wanted to talk to this. Uh, I think, uh, you know, students, so there's a lot of organizations they can join on campuses. Um, is it is it common for there to be uh, organizations, clubs, whatever it might be, as it relates to IT majors? And why might it be important to be involved in those organizations? So I'll jump in. Um, at Forsyth Tech, we do have student organizations. Um, we have an information technology professionals um, student organization, and um, it it combines all of our IT programs together, um, and even students outside of IT uh, that are not IT majors. And I think that gives a really good opportunity for students to collaborate, to talk about their common interests, uh, to build peer mentors. Um, it also gives you a network. Um, we're very involved in competitions uh, within our student organization, and we invite um, our business partners to come in and talk and give presentations uh, to those students as well. Sometimes it can lead into um, networking with a company that may be hiring and can lead to um, a career offer or a job offer uh, even before the student graduates. So there's a lot of um, really good benefits because you make those connections and relationships that can potentially last a lifetime. Yeah, I can I, I can totally second that um, as well for us. Like the computer science has a student organization, IT has a student organization combined with IS in our case. Um, Cyber has has an organization. Um, there's competitions, um, and in in all of these, and so yeah, I would um, I would I would I would absolutely second that. Um, That's perfect. And again, I'm going to put some more um, 
links in the chat here uh, with some of the stuff that we're talking about too. I'm going to pause right here and I'd like to ask Jessica Hensley, who's on, um, who is with CFNC. She's um, uh, been a, a career and technical education teacher. Uh, and just what we've been talking about so far, is there any notes or tips that you would add in, Mrs. Hensley? Um, I would. <laughs> so I, I love that they're talking about experiences and all those great things. So a big thing that our high school students can do that I think they don't realize they can do is job shadowing. And job shadowing is a huge, huge free opportunity to get a glimpse of what you would do in different careers. Now, the student that wanted to do biotechnology or biomedical, step out, go look at your local hospital. They often do job shadowing for students. So like if you live in Moore County, First Health of the Carolinas has a huge um, job shadowing program and they'll let you job shadow in the lab, um, in their IT, pretty much anywhere on that entire hospital campus, except for NICU and the ER, which there's reasons for that. But again, um, that's a really good opportunity for students to get a glimpse of what to do and to talk to those professionals firsthand. Um, always go talk to your CDC at the schools. A lot of kids don't realize they have a CDC. If you are in a North Carolina public school, you have access to a career development coordinator who also helps with those CTE programs, that's that career and technical education. Um, a few of you have talked about your children taking some of the classes like Microsoft PowerPoint, getting the certifications. Some of the high schools offer certifications in Python, CompTIA. Um, some of them have uh, Adobe. There's, there's several different certifications that you can get through your high school program if you ask the right questions. And you have to ask those questions. Um, Another one is, I was writing down my list, so FBLA. So we were talking about student organizations. FBLA is a big one and a lot of the high schools jump into your FBLA. They actually have a technology section in FBLA that you can compete. Um, that looks really good on college resumes, college applications, looks good on even work applications. Um, there's also a newer club, it's called TSA, and that one is focused on technology. So um, I would really like, I, I honestly can't even think of a school that actually has a TSA, but look into it because your school might have TSA. If they're a big school, they might have it. But um, most schools do have an FBLA. Uh, I think that's it. But again, job shadowing, huge. Even if your school doesn't participate in job shadowing, talk to your parents and reach out to a couple of big organizations in your community. And they would probably be more than happy to have you come job shadow for half a day and, and kind of get some better insight into what career you want to do and what you would need to do to get there. Yep, I think that's great. Thank you so much. And just doing a little Googling on job shadowing in North Carolina high schools, it comes up pretty quickly. You can see like Alexander County Schools, they've got on their website information about work-based learning, which is pretty much the same thing, right? I mean, it's very similar. Um, and let's see, there's other high schools that have information, Transylvania County Schools. I mean, there's there's all kinds of stuff that you can find pretty quickly um, with your high school too. And then also we put in links to, um, to under just what the FBLA is and the TSA and, and such. So thank you so much, Mrs. Hensley. I appreciate it. And again, if you guys have questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. All right, we have a few more questions. Soft skills. Anybody who wants to talk to this, I've got the next, this one and the next one um, I have left to kind of just all panelists. What about soft skills? Anyone want to talk to what soft skills are and if students interested in these in information technology fields need soft skills? Yeah, I think so soft skills is like the skills that um, sort of transcend the technical skills, right? Um, yes, I want to say, the students in IT do need soft skills. Um, I, the, I think the one that comes to mind, maybe two come to mind first is communication, like knowing how to express yourself, talking to people. And IT, like I said earlier, um, is, is really at the intersection of the technology and the, the business that it serves, right? And so you kind of need to, you need to be able to understand like 
what you're contributing to. Like, why do you need a database? Why do you need a network? Why do you need um, these programs? Why do you need the cybersecurity? Like, what's the what's the purpose of keeping the data secure and and intact? And um, so, kind of understanding. Um, and being able to communicate um, why are you doing what you're doing and what is the requirement that comes down from the people who need these technologies is, is, is very important. Um, the other one is critical thinking, um, always um, questioning assumptions and trying to understand assumptions and trying to understand your role in, in this whole picture. Um, I think those are the, those are my big ones. And in general, just kind of being present and being engaged in, in what you're doing, which I think will help you throughout your college career and then also beyond uh, in, in the job. I agree. Uh, yes. I agree. Communication, 100% number one thing. Whenever we talk with employers, uh, that's right at the top of their list. Um, I know uh, for me and a lot of friends and colleagues that I have had over the years. One reason we went into IT is to try to get away from uh, communicating and interacting so much with others. We wanted to uh, interact with the machines and, and not necessarily with the, the people, but uh, it does not take long to figure out um, IT is a very people oriented field. Uh, you have and you have to communicate uh, what you're doing in a clear manner. So I would add to that uh, teamwork is really important. You're for the most part, many IT jobs, you are going to be working on a team. You will not be an island to yourself. Everything you do is going to be interconnected with something or someone else. Um, and everybody's part has to work correctly. So teamwork is super important. Um, the other thing that has started to bubble up to the top that we don't really think about a lot is ethics. Mm -hmm. Ethics is so important. Um, and that's, that's becoming even more important as AI comes on board, uh, knowing what to do and when to do it and what's right, what's wrong. There's not always um, a clear line, um, especially in IT. So uh, having that grounding there. Um, and then finally, just uh, reiterating, um, show up. <laughs> your, your employer <laughs> just wants you to show up. That's a big thing that we hear um, especially now is uh, whenever they they hire someone for a job, they want them to be there on time. They want them to be there when they're supposed to be and just be present. Um, as uh, Dr. Wickebauer said, uh, be present in the moment and show up and that will go a long way. Absolutely. Uh, very important. And we've put that in here as well. The, the idea of ethics for so many fields has become very, uh, you know, very important to talk about. And as we think about AI and the changing things with IT, it's super important. So thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we are going to come over to the last official question here. And again, it's for everyone. We have talked about this some. So I just am more curious to see if anyone has some more things to add as it pertains to lifelong learning and the importance of that. And I know Dr. Short talked about that with, you know, it, it becomes stale, right? You've got to keep learning, right? Um, anything else anyone wanted to add with the importance of lifelong learning with IT careers? I can add a little tidbit. So. <laughs> As uh, we, we were saying, I used to teach business and CT courses. Well, I used to teach Microsoft Office, so PowerPoint and Word. Um, I have not worked on Microsoft programs for several years since. And starting this new job, I have to go back to Microsoft. And I've been using Google for several years. Um, so there has been so much that has changed. I am Googling how to do certain things on Microsoft because it has changed so dramatically over the last four or five years. And again, it's like lifelong learning. I had to dig into it. I had to go back and look and say, wait a minute, the ribbon looks completely different. All these things look different. Why are they hiding these from me? So, and it's totally different from Google. So um, again, lifelong learning is really important in all these aspects and you have to, you have to figure out how to fill in those gaps. You know, I obviously had a gap. I thought I was good and I was like, whoo, this really changed. So, you know, I've had to spend a lot of time Googling it and that's okay. 
But again, you, you have to learn how to fill those gaps and keep learning. Yeah, and I think I think in IT you cannot avoid it. I mean, it's really it's 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 really changing, and and so um, like like what you said about um, PowerPoint. In the meantime, probably not only the ribbon changed, but also now the application is maybe no longer on your computer, but in the cloud, and so the the um, um, the the licenses have changed, and the way you access these things have changed, and. Um, and it's 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 going to be really difficult for someone in IT to not be at least um, somewhat conscious about these changes and and go along. I mean, there are certain things, like we said, like economics don't change, economic laws might not change. Um, so certain things stay the same, but the technology is such and how you manage it um, and what you can do with it and what the risks are and and the limitations and and how you kind of. Um, talk to users about it. Like we have users today that are so much more um, um, knowledgeable about um, IT and we have to talk to them in different ways than we did in the past. Um, th these things are not avoidable. So yeah, it's it's important. Lifelong learning is important for sure in IT. Thank you so much. And Go ahead. If I can just uh, jump in with one thing, um, that as you go beyond uh, your education and enter into a career, one thing you can ask at your interview, uh, your, the person interviewing will almost always ask if you have questions. One thing you can ask is how, do, uh, the, how does the company invest in the professional development and the growth of their employees? Uh, this lets that employer know that, number one, you have a desire to stay current in the field and um, that you want to learn and grow with them. And number two, it gives you an idea as to how that employer invests in their employees and their value on learning as well. So that's something that you can uh, carry with you throughout your career, and it helps you understand what that expectation is and um, how much the employer is willing to invest in your continued growth as well. Perfect, thank you so much. I appreciate it all. Um, is there anyone on here that has um, some plans as we're thinking about lifelong learning? This is my last question in this area, I promise. Uh, is there anyone who has any plans, you know, that you're thinking about some things that you're still going to do? You know, we have this this group of professionals that are on here, right? You guys are experts and professionals. Does anyone have some things that they're thinking about doing still or are currently doing um, for lifelong learning? I'll say something because I'm kind of new in it. So um, what my plans are, um, I'm getting a, a certification in two languages, which is HTML and CSS, which are different kind of web languages. Um, and then I might be looking at getting like my project management certification. So there's a lot of different um, things that you can do to add on to that. So I've got plans as well. So I mean, in, in education, AI was just thrown at us, right? I mean, it's and it's not so much just like, how do we teach the students uh, AI technologies for their careers, but it's also suddenly we have to change our teaching. And um, because AI came along, students are using it, we can use it in the classrooms and things like that. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's unavoidable. <laughs> Absolutely. And we you know with AI students that are on and kind of listening, you know, you might think um, you may find I, I, AI useful or you may not have much thoughts about it. You may have some instructors that are really I mean, and there's different things, right? You want to be able to figure out how to use it to um, benefit what you're doing and how to improve and, and think through stuff, not necessarily to use it in, uh, repl in replace thinking, right? It's how can we kind of enhance some things. Um, so that's it's, it's hard, but we're all figuring it out. And students, your teachers, your faculty members, your instructors, counselors, whoever, I can guarantee you all of these conferences are conferences that we go to, um, that we have to go to every year or multiple conferences. We're talking about AI. Um, so it's it's there and we're talking about it. Okay. Um, all right, I have a, a question that has come in I'd like to, to answer as we're looking at student questions next, okay? 
Um, we have a student who is interested in getting a uh, help desk IT job just to kind of get um, their foot in the door in understanding, you know, having, you know, having a job in that field um, and go, I guess, after into cybersecurity industry. So after they get their associates, but they want to work in, with a help desk IT Uh, if there's a student that is interested in doing that, maybe they're interested in having that as a job as they're working on a degree in cybersecurity or whatever it might be. Um, the IT, the help desk IT jobs, um, how would a student go about getting those? Is there education required? Do you just apply for them? Does anyone have information about that? So in in my in my um, university, um, I actually thought about um, putting that in, uh, talking about that earlier, and then I forgot. A lot of students in IT have jobs in our help desk. Like our our IT department employs a lot of our students in IT. Um, I I want to say probably a little bit of background in IT would be good, but they train them too, right? And then you kind of move you move up the chain, like you 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 come in at like a lower level and, and kind of get some of the requests and then um, from from users and then kind of. Um, uh, distribute those requests to the experts, um, and then you can move up. Like I have a I have a student now that came through our um, IT four year degree. He's now in the master program, and he was a team lead in 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 technology um, in in the help desk, and he just um, stopped doing that. Um, so for um, yeah, so there should be there should be um, opportunities for help desk, maybe even in that um, for in in that uh, university institution or college institution. Yeah. And Forsyth Tech has a, an associate degree in IT technical support and services, which is perfectly aligned with those entry-level help desk careers. Um, one uh, certification that we have found is really helpful is the A-plus certification uh, for that particular uh, job. And uh, communication is one of those soft skills that's critical because you have to be able to talk someone through uh, their situation uh, over the phone. And um, a lot of times those are remote um, situations where you're at that help desk uh, center and you remote into their computer and try to resolve it. Um, and if it can't be resolved that way, then you, you go on site and uh, see what's going on. But we do have a IT technical support and services degree at Forsyth Tech. Perfect. Thank you. I'll say two things with that too. One is um, that that communication piece and those soft skills are, you know, as it relates to like the IT help desk, for example, um, our positions, just for an example, are remote as well. I'm, I'm fully re well, mostly remote. Uh, and when I have issues, we've got two folks at my company that I go to um, for those remote questions. And I truly appreciate their patience and friendliness working through stuff. Because let's consider if they weren't like that. Let's say someone's angry and and you know they're not very friendly and they act like you're bothering them. I may be less inclined to reach out to them when I need help, and I might try and fix it myself, which may be a very bad thing. Uh, so it's important, right? I mean, it's important for them to, um, you know, even even if afterwards they say. Gosh, she asked too many questions. <laughs> you know, um, just just helping helping through that. It's important as it relates to very likely overall um, IT, whatever it is at your company and security, cybersecurity, um, business security. I think that's probably all important. Okay, any other questions from our students? Um, we will address before we go. But what I'd like to do as we kind of finish this up today. Um, and then I'll have a, a closing slide here is uh, final thoughts. So we got our final thoughts from Miss Farrell. Um, I will try and go through the order I did earlier if I can remember. So we'll we'll start we'll start with Dr. Short uh, and see whatever uh, you might have for final thoughts today. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, April. Again, it's been a tremendous honor to be able to speak to you um, this afternoon. Um, in closing, number one, I just want to say um, high school is um, a great opportunity to explore. Um, if you're not sure about what your career path is, that's okay. 
Um, IT is a great path where you can do a lot of changes, twists and turns, and you'll meet uh, people along the way. For instance, I have an instructor in IT now. His uh, first major was in psychology. So it, it's okay to to change careers and switch your path along life. Um, many people do that. Uh, most people do that. But in closing, I want to mention October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So um, if you want to do some research on that, there's a lot of resources out um, throughout the month of October on IT and cybersecurity awareness. Um, for Scythe Tech is a center of academic excellence in cyber defense. So we invite anyone who wants to learn more about our programs in IT and what career paths they that are available, uh, please reach out. We'd be happy to talk to you in um, more detail and help direct you along the path. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Short. And I'm going to put a link in the chat about um, Cybersecurity Awareness Month in case anyone wants to check, check it out, take a look. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Hardy, I'm going to come over to you. Any um, last thoughts or anything you wanted to mention as we um, get close to closing up uh, this afternoon? Yeah, same thing that Dr. Short said. Yeah, just because, you know, if things don't work out, something happens, later in life, things can happen. I'm 38 years old and I started doing this when I, well, I kind of got into more of the IT stuff when I was 34. So, um, late in life for me. Uh, so I'd, like I said, my biggest recommendation is always look, make sure that you're happy. And because if you're happy within your job, then you're going to be able to do more things like doing different kinds of education and higher education. So just look for a place that's going to be good for you and is concerned about you as a human being. Mm -hmm. That's my best advice to give. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Ms. Hardy. We really appreciate that. Uh, and I will come over to uh, Dr. Gebauer and see about any final thoughts you might have for us this afternoon. Yeah, um, well, first of all, we can't meet, we can't wait to meet the students, come kind of um, enroll in our classes and have, have them be in our seats. Um, what I would like to say is if a student is interested in a particular program, um, go research um, or a particular university, go reach, research that program on the university or college website. There's usually a person listed that is a coordinator of these programs. Sometimes they're professors, sometimes they're staff members, but reach out to these people because their job is to explain what the program does, um, what the requirements are, what you can do with it, how you get, get into it, what kind of credit you get from other institutions and things like that. So that's part of their job description, and they will be very happy to talk to you, maybe even have you come visit with them. Um, I mean, we have campus tours on campus, but we have also had students come specifically for particular programs and, and, and ask us, show us the facilities, tell us what it's all about, and we are really more than happy to do that. So um, that's maybe, that's another um, advice that I have. And again, I hope we can welcome some of you in the future. Thank you so much. That is absolutely uh, amazing and perfect um, for all of those. And like we said before, everyone on here had such great tips um, and links and everything that we've been able to share uh, in the chat, but we will make sure that we also um, have those as we um, send that out. Before I do this, I do have one more question that I wanted to address um, to see if anyone wanted to answer it and then we'll close up today. Um, someone is wondering if it's worth it to get a degree in just cybersecurity or maybe not, you know, computer science with cybersecurity configuration. Uh, big question here. Uh, what's the difference? I don't know what, what, and when we say, um, is it worth it? That's a, a hard one sometimes to address just that there's so many things that make it worth it for you. So I'm going to, I'm going to offer an assumption here to say, finding a job, finding a job after you graduate. So is it more likely to find a job after you graduate in just cybersecurity or maybe computer science with cybersecurity configuration? Um, don't know anything about that. Anyone want to answer, have information about that side of it? Maybe a minor? How do they connect? So I'll, I'll say something that may be um, kind of an unpopular opinion or unpopular thought. Um, I usually tell students to 
major in the, the subject in the field and the concentrations that you're passionate about, because those will be the courses that you do the best in. You will go above and beyond. You will be willing to do that extra competition or participate in that extra activity that will help your instructors to give you a recommendation for that job interview. And um, that that's the most important thing. Find the courses that align with your values and your interest, because at the end of the day, whenever that interview comes, uh, yes, the, the person that is interviewing you for the job, they're going to wanna make sure that you know the technical skills but a lot of times what we hear on with our industry partners is they can teach you the technical skills if there's a gap. There's a lot of on the job, job training. You may have uh, majored in computer science and did a lot of Python programming. But once you get on the job, even though you know Python, it's going to look differently and feel differently whenever you're coding their software. Um, so they're going to provide that training and fill any, any technical gaps. What they're going to be looking for on the interview and what's going to get you that job is your personality, your passion, um, your communication skills, and you showing up um, prepared. And that's what they're going to be looking for. That's what's going to get you the job and what's going to keep you in that job um, and, and progress you through the career. So don't worry so much about your, your major and your minor and all of that. Go with what you're passionate about. Yeah, and when, when you look at the type of courses that you will be taking, you you can see that, right? So computer science is, is maybe much more math heavy than um, cybersecurity is, and IT is a little bit different again, and information systems may have like more some some of the business components, and kind of look look at the courses and, and see what combination really speaks to you. And I also want to say like the, the, the job will come by itself. All of these fields have good job prospects. Um, and you will find the best job for yourself kind of by listening also inside yourself. But what are what are the things you are most passionate about and then will be more, most successful? Yes, absolutely. I love that so much. So I've, I've heard the two things that hopefully will stick out to students. One is um, don't worry too much about the exact specifics right now. Um, you might want to think about the careers that will happen at the end, but I know Dr. Kabauer also mentioned the courses that might be within certain fields. And if you go onto almost any college's website and you find that major, it's going to list the courses that a student will take in that major. And that might give you a feel. So perhaps if you're comparing a couple different things, um, especially if in one way that it might impact you right now is if you know you're looking at two or three different fields, but there's not one college that offers all of those. And so perhaps where you go is important, right? For which way you go. So look at the courses and see what um what you know is is more interesting to you and where you excel at. Um, and at the same time, um, not that our students probably want to hear this, but a lot of us didn't quite end up exactly where we initially started at. You may be close, right? Some people are close to where I'm close, you know, um, some of us are close, uh, but maybe not exactly 100%. So be flexible and keep your eyes and ears open to learn about different options. All right. So a couple things to remind you all of as we dig into Countdown to College, go to cfnc.org slash C2C to learn more information. Now, if you're not a senior and you're listening to this and you think, well, that's good, but what should I be doing now? You're not a senior yet, junior, sophomore, exactly what you all have been hearing this afternoon. Research careers, um, look around, go onto the college's websites, look at the majors, look at the courses, attend programs like this, see about job shadowing. Um, you know, there's just so many things and tips that we will share with you all with the recording. Uh, research colleges too. Um, you know, maybe do some college visits, get a feel for what majors are at which institutions. Not all colleges have the same majors, okay? Not all careers require the same education and training. It varies. It really varies. It varies a lot in this field, as we've heard today. Uh, and keep your grades up. If you're a high school junior, 
it's arguably the most important year in high school because as you're applying to your institutions your senior year, they're really only going to see your grades and such through junior year. So it's very, very important. So do research, attending programs like this, excellent first start, talk with your career development coordinator at your school. Don't be shy to reach out to people that work at the institutions. They're all so friendly and helpful. Um, if you reach out to you know, Dr. Short or Dr. Gebauer, for example, and ask questions and you don't end up attending Forsyth or UNCW, I don't think they're going to reach out to you and yell at you guys. They're happy to help you. And they're always just looking to advance the field, right? Um, so it's it's really wonderful. So um, do some research. Um, I want to take a second to thank all of you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for attending. And a huge, huge, huge thank you to all of our panelists today. Um, Dr. Gebauer, Ms. Hardy, uh, Dr. Short, and then we had Ms. Farrell, who was on earlier, and then we have had um, Mrs. Hensley join and, and help us some things also. Your time is extremely valuable, and we appreciate it um, so very, very much. So um, we thank you all so much. Um, and this is going to conclude our program today, keeping an eye on the time also. Um, we have uh, finished right on time. So Thank you all again. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you and good luck to all the college applicants. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.